It's all about crunch time and taking full advantage of that. For Penn State right now, this is where you need to turn this momentum around. And although we were going through adversity as a team, we all stuck together. Kick it up, it's blocked! Picked up by Halen! Touchdown, Penn State! And the Nittany Lions electrify Beaver State! Once in a lifetime, feeling definitely made the impossible possible. One play, one moment that changed Penn State's entire season. Penn State wins the Big Ten title! What a difference a year makes as the roles are reversed in Columbus and the hunted become the hunters. Fires a straight touchdown! It's a matchup we've all been waiting for. It's a revenge or motivator? Down he goes! Oh yeah, it is. The Heisman contenders. Oh, the rankings. What a spectacular play! A game that will again change the national conversation. Penn State. Ohio State. Now. Columbus, Ohio, two versus six, Penn State, Ohio State. Let's go downstairs to the All-American girl, Jenny Taft. Coach, no team in the country has started games better than you guys. You talked to us about eliminating the noise. How do you do it in this environment? Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Now, this is why you do it for days like this in these types of environments, two historic programs. So it's going to be a challenge. It's going to take more than just the first quarter. Last year's win against these guys, it sparked something in this team. How do you do it again? Last year's last year. We're worried about this season and, and this game today. All right, best of luck. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Penn State won the toss. They've elected to receive the football. The weather here in Columbus, perfect football weather. 42 degrees at kickoff time. It should get colder as this game goes on. Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt with you. This series dates back to 1912. Ohio State leads it 17 to 14, and they've won four of the last five. 104,944 capacity here at the shoe. Ohio State wearing their alternate jerseys with their LeBron James cleats. And back deep, the dangerous one, Saquon Barkley. Nuremberger will send it away. Ohio State, Penn State, and we're underway from Columbus. Barkley from inside his own five. Barkley with a lead. Barkley with a burst. Barkley down the sideline. Saquon Barkley runs the opening kick. 97 yards. Touchdown, Nittany Lions. No flags. Special teams has been a problem for Urban Meyer dating back to last year and all this season. And one of the biggest issues on special teams has been this kickoff unit, Urban Meyer. Got to be sick to his stomach. That's the one player that you can't kick the ball to and allow him to return it. And Barkley puts a stamp on the opening of this football game. Tyler Davis in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. Saquon Barkley has now scored a touchdown in 15 straight games. The longest streak in Division I. Against Maryland, the Terps took a kickoff back. This was almost a duplicate of that, taking the ball to the left side of the field. That was the weakest part of this kickoff unit against Maryland, and it remains against Penn State. And once Barkley gets a crease, it is over. He was in the end zone basically when he crossed the 20-yard line on his side of the football. And Urban Meyer has got to be livid right now. That unit is the one that he spends the most time on, the kickoff team. They've struggled with it all year, and it comes back to bite them in the opening of this ballgame. The last game without a touchdown in 2016 against Ohio State. So Penn State striking quickly. Ohio State coming off a bye week. Prior to that, they had defeated Nebraska in Lincoln and Maryland here at home the week before in which they gave off a 100-yard kick return for a touchdown. And it's virtually 
the opposite to what happened last week for Penn State in a gigantic game against Michigan at home. What they were able to do is create the momentum early and get the crowd on their side. Here, in front of over 105,000 at the shoe, they took the crowd out of the ball game right away. Tyler Davis will take it away. Paris Campbell back deep for the Buckeyes. Campbell starts from his own seven-yard line. Tries to get outside, hops forward, spins and goes down at the 25. Nick Scott with the tackle on special teams. So when Ohio State has the football, what's the story? This offense has been on a record pace the last few games, but is it any different when they face a quality opponent? The last two teams against ranked opponent, Clemson and Oklahoma, 16 total points. We'll see if it's any different now. And they're going against one of the best, the best scoring defense in the entire nation. 9.6 points per game allowed, led by their middle linebacker, Jason Cabinda. JT Barrett starts for his own 25. J.K. Dobbins in the backfield. And this is Barrett pulling it out, tucking it, and he'll get to the 30-yard line. J.T. Barrett is Ohio State's all-time passing yards leader and the first Buckeye in history to hit the 10,000-yard mark in total offense. And this is a guy that played maybe the best football game of his life against Nebraska the last time they were on the field. He was virtually perfect in that game, accounted for seven total touchdowns, only had six incompletions. Ryan Buckholtz. Down right now for Penn State, 7 to nothing. Nittany Lions back right after this. And here's our Craveable Moment sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Nine years ago here at the Shoe, another epic battle between these two took place. The Nittany Lions forced two turnovers and backup quarterback Pat Devlin scored the only touchdown of the game as Penn State beat the ninth-ranked Buckeyes 13-6. That was the last time Penn State beat a top 10 team on the road, and they're off to a great start right now, up 7 to nothing. However, bad news for Penn State. Ryan Buckholt has to be carted off. Yeah, and he's been playing great football. He's got a couple of sacks on the year. He's a sophomore from the state of Pennsylvania, and so they'll have to go into their depth right away. And on the field, it looks like a redshirt freshman, Shaka Tony comes in. He's a speed rush specialist, only weighs 230 pounds. Second down and five at the 30-yard line. Opening series for Ohio State. J.K. Dobbins motions into the backfield. And they'll give it to him middle the lane. First down, Dobbins tries to hit the sideline, stays on his feet, stiffs arms, and gets to the 45. Nice run as Koa Farmer finally brings him down. You know, this is a nice little bit of role reversal. A few years ago when Penn State came to town, it was Saquon Barkley that was the freshman back on the other side, and Ezekiel Elliott for the Buckeyes. Now Dobbins for the Buckeyes. Near side, they find Paris Campbell, and he lost it. Ball picked up. Penn State, Farmer, down at the 23. So a comedy of errors for Ohio State early on as the Nittany Lions take over deep in Buckeye territory. Well, just great pursuit by this Penn State defense and then the ability to be aggressive once they get on the outside. That was Manny Bowen, number 43 from his linebacker spot. He gets all the way out there, puts his helmet right on the football. It gets coughed up. And a great return there from another linebacker, Koa Farmer. And for the second straight week in a massive game, this Penn State team has come out in the opening few minutes with all guns blazing. This is an amazing performance so far for the Nittany Lions. Penn State beat Michigan last week, 42-13 in State College. First and 10 of the 23. McSorley, shovel pass, Barkley, all sorts of running room as he slides down. Jordan Fuller with the tackle. Yeah, that's a great tackle in the open field from Jordan Fuller because he was the last Buckeye left. Great little concept on the shovel pass to the most dangerous player in college football, and it looked like he might get a seam there and take that one to the end zone. Empty backfield now for McSorley. Second and five of the 18. Barkley lines up in the backfield with him. McSorley fires it out. The sickie hits the sideline and the six feet, six inch tight end gets close to the five, ushered out of bounds by Fuller. 
and Kendall Sheffield. Yeah, as far as the conversation for Penn State's offense, Barkley can suck all the oxygen out of the room, right? He gets all the pub, but Gusecki, he's a matchup nightmare as well. First and goal of the nine. Barkley looking, picking, reverses, and goes down. Well defended. Tracy Sprinkle finally stops him in the backfield. That and that's a four-yard loss. And the epitome of doing your job. No Buckeye got out of position. Barkley had nowhere to run. Forcing now the ball kind of onto Trace McSorley's shoulder here as Nick Bosa. Gets set up on top of your screen, one of the best defensive ends in America. Second and goal of the 13. McSorley in the end zone. Incomplete. That ball intended for Deshaun Hamilton. Had it in his hands, just couldn't bring it in as Damon Webb covered. Now one of the reasons that Penn State had to pull that game out late against Iowa previous in the season as they settled for field goals on good quality offensive possessions. Here's another chance. Try to rewrite that history from previously in the season and a big opportunity for Ohio State to force a field goal kick. Third down goal of the 13. Barkley's been great this season catching balls out of the backfield. McSorley lobs it in the corner. Touchdown, Nittany Lions. Deshaun Hamilton. And Penn State, with 11.36 to play in the first quarter, goes up 13-0. And Ohio State even tried to create the matchup. Damon Arnett, normally a corner, he moves into the slot to take the best wide receiver for Penn State, Deshaun Hamilton. That's just a great adjustment on the football. Good opportunity for him to go get that because McSorley gave him enough air to adjust. Touchdown, Nittany Lions. Tyler Davis, and it's good, 14-0, Penn State. Deshaun Hamilton, Penn State's all-time leader in receptions. He capitalizes off the turnover, finds the end zone. Nittany Lions coming out, smacking around the Buckeyes, 14-zip. This college football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by AT&T. And by Discover Card the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. Welcome back to Columbus. The Nittany Lions coming out, playing extremely well. 14 zip. They've outscored opponents 104 to nothing in the first quarter this season. The only team in FBS to not give up a single point in the first quarter this year. Uh, meeting with this team, coaching staff last night in their hotel here in Columbus. You just got a feeling that they were ready for this one. They knew they wanted a piece of the Buckeyes. So Ohio State will start inside the five-yard line. K.J. Hill up the sideline with room and finally knocked out of bounds close to the 30. Now with the Astros up by one game, the Dodgers are looking for a crucial win in Houston to even the series. Game four of the World Series coming up next on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Boy, every one of those games has been just tremendous. Starting pitchers tonight, Alex Wood and Charlie Morton. And I suspect we're going to see a little offense. Maybe some fireworks there for our friends Joe Buck and John Smoltz. Well, that's what Ohio State wants to see right now from their offense. Mike Weber, the sophomore in the game now at running back. Ball start. Offense number 78. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Boy, these mistakes from Ohio State. A false start called on the new right guard, Demetrius Knox. He got the start. Bowen, their normal right guard, broke his leg against Maryland, a game that Gus, you and I did. And then Knox got the start against Nebraska, played really well. They were excited to see how he played today, but a mistake early. So first and 15 to the 25. 
High snap handle. Barrett finds Weber out of the backfield, and Weber is taken down by Farmer quickly, and that will be a loss of five. Well, trying to get the ball on the outside, on the perimeter quickly, and just not executed from the wide receivers. Missed the block. Great job by Farmer getting into the backfield, getting Weber down to the ground. So second and 20 at the 20-yard line for the Buckeyes. Barrett steps up in the pocket, throws, caught, oh, dropped. Another mistake, Marcus Ball, the tight end, had it in his hands and just couldn't hold on. Well, every opportunity that we've seen so far for Ohio State to try to make a play, they have not. The mistakes and the missed opportunities. Third down and 20, Barrett with room. Wants to run it, and it'll go down to the 25. Ohio State will have to punt it away. Sharif Miller there to track down JT Barrett. And I love what Penn State did there on the third and long. What they do is they drop everybody into coverage, and there's nowhere for Barrett to go with the football. The protection wasn't bad. He's got to escape a little bit and adjust the pocket, but there's just nowhere to go because so many Nittany Lions had dropped back into pass coverage. Excellent defense called there by the coordinator, Brent Pry. So Drew Christman will punt it away from his own 11-yard line. DeAndre Tompkins is the deep man. He'll backpedal, and it's fair caught inside the 25, a 50-yard punt. So coming up, Saquon Barkley. One of the most dynamic players, if not the most dynamic player in college football, back on the field. Hey, check out the Go RV sights and sounds from this amazing atmosphere here at the historic Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. And it started early, too. Even in the plane right here, I connected in, in Minneapolis, and the plane was filled with Nittany Lions and Buckeyes. They were chirping at each other all the way back on Thursday. <laughs> it's been a couple of days to build up here for this one, and the Nittany Lions have showed up early, and they've played excellent so far. Penn State, first down and 10 at their own 25. And it's Sorley trying to run the football. And he'll gain maybe a half yard on the play in front of Jerome Baker. What's the story when Penn State has the rock? Well, we've already seen it come to fruition a little bit. Is Greg Schiano, the defensive coordinator, thought that the matchup with the wide receivers of Penn State, namely Deshaun Hamilton and Mike Gusecki, was going to be huge for his corners, Ward and Arnett. But we've already seen one of those matchups won for the touchdown, Gus. And Hamilton caught it on the last series. Second down and 10 of the 25. McSorley going deep, and it is incomplete. Ball intended for DeAndre Tompkins. Well defended by Denzel Ward, who they feel is going to be the next great defensive back at Ohio State. Well, here's the first time in the game where Ohio State has an opportunity to create some field position and some positive momentum. A third and long. Third down and 10. McSorley under pressure, gets it away. Barkley hits the sideline and a first down. Saquon Barkley. What a great design here because the linebacker is trying to come up like he's going to blitz. Then he has man coverage on Barkley and just gets run away from. That's the explosiveness of Barkley. Yeah, so at that point, Jerome Baker thinks he's in good position, but a step and you're done against Saquon Barkley. 33rd catch of the season for Barkley. He has three receiving touchdowns from the 35. McSorley, and he is slammed to the turf. Chris Worley, that didn't fool anybody. Worley is coming off of a sprained foot. He heard it earlier in the year and has sat out three games, played a little bit against Nebraska, namely in nickel situations, but here back on the field. Second and 12 at the 33. Sorely rolling, throws on the move, and another loss 
Ohio State right on the sicky as the tight end made the catch. Hubbard, the money man, in with the tackle. Well, here's another opportunity. Penn State went with the screen, the middle screen to Barkley on their last third down, but this is a longer situation. We're going to have to throw the football down the field. The guy with the biggest mismatch is the tight end. Kosicki is in the bottom of the formation. Third down and 13 at the 32. Empty backfield for Trace McSorley. He'll throw it. McSorley dancing in the pocket. Frees himself. Throws. And incomplete. Kosicki couldn't get up for it. And Penn State will have to punt it away. And McSorley will want that one back. Kosicki, it's so hard to overthrow him. He's a former volleyball and basketball player, and he just couldn't get his hands set as he was trying to go up high and get that pass. A little bit too much heat from Trace McSorley, who evaded the rush and had him open for the conversion. K.J. Hill, the deep man. Blake Gilligan will punt it away from the 19. This one shanked off the side of his foot. And out of bounds as it crosses the 30. So coming up, J.T. Barrett hold on the flag on the play. Really poor decision here from Penn State. Irwin Charles took a big swipe at the end of the play. John O'Neill, your referee today. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 11 of the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. That is number 11's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Timeout. And it's Charles, so coming up, Ohio State on offense right after this. Fox College football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. Today's aerial coverage is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. Things not going right for Ohio State to start this game down 14 to nothing. They give up a Saquon Barkley touchdown on the opening kickoff. Turn the ball over on their first series. That's why this is such a big series for them offensively. They've got to establish some rhythm, shake off that start, and capitalize on this quality field position after the penalty. First and 10 at the 42. Ball start, offense number 59. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, that right side of the offensive line has been a huge problem for Urban Meyer. Demetrius Knox is in there at the right guard. Isaiah Prince, who has not played to his capability, 6'7", 310 pounds. He's played in a ton of football games over his career. He was the number one player out of Maryland as a senior when he was recruited. And he's got to start playing better. First and 15 at the 37. Ohio State trying to shake off the Hanks here. Here's Barrett underneath, and it's caught. Austin Mack with the reception. And he's brought down by Marcus Allen and Manny Bowen. And your leaders, your best players, are the ones that generally have to settle you down after an odd start like this. Look for Barrett here to try to get hot on this series with some easy completions. It's a gain of 10. Barrett giving it up. Dobbins around the corner, and he'll tumble forward to the 49. Shane Simmons with the stop for Penn State. And these types of third and short, Urban Meyer throughout his history has left the quarterback run. Third down one of the 49. And Barrett does run it, picks up the first down and more. The call, partner, as he gets to the Penn State 30. An 18-yard pickup, Christian Campbell with the stop. The reason he likes that is he likes to put his coach on the field with the responsibility to make the decision. Barrett was a great decision there for the conversion. First down at the Nittany Lion 31 and another penalty flat. False, False start. start again. Offense number 14. Five yard penalty still first down. They're trying to move just a little too quickly right now at the tempo. Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator for this Buckeye team, he historically has been a guy that loves to go fast with his offense. 
but then it falls on Barrett's shoulders. Not necessarily the penalties on these other guys, but Barrett has to make sure that they're set, ready to go before he calls for the snap. The big question for T. Barrett, can he play big in a big game? First down and 15 at the 36. Barrett fires out wide, and it's caught by Hill, who finally gets knocked out of bounds inside the 25 by Troy Apke after a 12-yard gain. And another Nittany line player down. And that's the corner number one, Christian Campbell. Good length, and he's been having a very good se uh, season, the senior from Alabama. 23 tackles on the year. And a guy that has certainly been a big part of this defense as the number one scoring defense in America. Campbell from Phoenix City, Alabama Central High School as James Franklin comes out. It looked like he was trying to reach back. Anytime Gus, you see one of those players try, you know, reach the arm out, and then the, the runner kind of runs through the forearm, forearm area. A lot of times those defenders will come up favoring that left arm. Here's Campbell, and you see how he kind of reaches out. See, and that's that, that pullback when the ball carrier runs through that arm can cause a little tension there, and he'll go get that attended to on the sideline. Hopefully he is okay as he walks off on his own. Second down and three at the 24. Ohio State starting to settle down now on offense, although they do have three false start penalties in the first quarter. J.K. Dobbins, the running back. Dobbins gets outside with a land first down and more. Dobbins stopped at the 13 by Ellison Jordan. And it's a first down for Ohio State. I am so impressed with this true freshman back. There really wasn't anything there in the middle, and he had the visions and vision and presence to bounce it out to the left side. Dobbins with three 100-yard games already. Barrett hit as he throws incomplete. A lot of pressure in the backfield. Sharif Miller getting to him, and this defensive line for Penn State is a pretty good one. They are, and I would say that the sum is greater than the parts. But they play hard and aggressive. They get up the field. They made life miserable on John O'Corn from Michigan a week ago. And they're playing pretty well so far, although Ohio State has been able to run the football so far in this game. Second down and 10 of the 13. Barrett to the sideline. K.J. Hill hit as soon as he catches the football. And he's hit by Uruwaria. Well, this is the situation that is so difficult as a quarterback because you don't have the space to affect the defense deep. Third and long inside your own 15, very difficult. Usually have to make a tight window throw as a quarterback and put some zip on. Buckeyes need 10. Dobbins in motion out of the backfield. Barrett has been successful running it so far. Here's JT Barrett in trouble. And Barrett is set. At the 21, Curtis Cawthorn got to him and brings him down, a loss of eight. Good coverage in the back end. Wasn't anywhere for Barrett to go with the football initially. He was looking off to the right side, no separation, and then that allowed the rush to get to him. They ran a big game up the middle, and now you're going to see it get there. That's Cawthorn, comes around from the tackle spot, and the pur pursuit gets Barrett to the ground. So Sean Nurnberger comes in to attempt a 38-yarder. Got it up. And good. Ohio State on the board. 14-3. Under five to play. First quarter. Back to Columbus right after this. 
I was right out of college and I was starting job interviews and I already noticed that my teeth were starting to shift. When I heard of Smile Direct, I was so excited. Let Smile Direct Club give you a smile you'll love for 60% less than braces by sending invisible aligners direct to you. Plus, we straighten most smiles in an average of six months. So convenient. You don't have to go to an orthodontist every month. You can go into a smile shop. They also have a kit that they can ship directly to your house. There's really no excuse to not try it. Get started for 60% less at SmileDirectClub.com. So Ohio State scores 14 to 3 now. The dangerous part kicking off. Well, this is the unit that has just struggled so much this year. Urban Meyer has talked about the placement of the kick being off, the coverage not being where it needed to be. They've shuffled some guys in and out of the lineup on this kickoff unit. And at this point, with Saquon Barkley back to receive, because I'd kick it along the ground. I think it would just be crazy to boot this ball in the air with the struggles that they have had to the most dangerous man in college football. Last time he touched it on the kickoff, 97 yards later, he was in the end zone. Dernberger, and he'll just pop it in the air, and fair caught at the 25. Time now for the best seat in the house, sponsored by eBay. Fill your cart with color. Here's Jenny Tapp. Well, Gus, all eyes were on Saquon Barkley coming into this game. And, yeah, they should be because we all saw how he started this game, his 15th straight game with a touchdown. That ties a Penn State record. And earlier this week I asked him about that streak. He said, really, I had no idea. That's really a credit to the coaches, to my O-line. As a playmaker, I need to make those big plays. That is what I live for. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. First and 10 of the 27. And it's McSorley running the football, and he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Urban Meyer saying about Saquon Barkley, he's the best all-purpose guy we've probably faced maybe in my career. And that's 30 years. I mean, which is saying something. Think of some of the backs that he's seen, whether it was his career at Florida in the SEC or even right here, the Big Ten. He's seen guys like Melvin Gordon. He's even had one of his own, which was a great back, Percy Hartman. Second and ten of the 27, McSorley to throw it. Steps up, and McSorley set at defensive line for Ohio State, starting to rev it up. Well, you're going to see the slant come around, but ultimately they get home. Draymond Jones, number 86 with the sack, a loss of four. And Sifu Larry Johnson's black belts are starting to make their presence felt. Third and 14 at the 23. McSorley over the middle. Barkley with the catch. Barkley will not get the first down. As Ohio State gets him at the 30-yard line, Jerome Baker may be the most athletic linebacker on this team in on the play. I love what they do here from Greg Schiano. They're just going to play zone defense. What that does is it's not going to create a matchup situation where Barkley has a one-on-one. -on -one. You allow the completion underneath the coverage, rally up with all your defenders to make the tackle. Blake Gilligan punts it away. K.J. Hill looking for a shot. He'll get it from the 30. Hill straight ahead, and Hill crashes forward as he crosses the 45 up to the 46, a 39-yard punt, and a 17-yard return. Cam Brown with a tackle. Let's go to Los Angeles and check in with Greg Wolf. Gus, thanks. We go to South Bend, number 14, NC State, ninth-ranked Notre Dame after a special teams touchdown by the Wolf Pack. Notre Dame answers. Brandon Wimbush. To his tight end, Durham Smythe, 25-yard score. It is all tied at seven, first quarter. Gus, Joel, back to you. Uh, that's a big development because Wimbush has really been more of a threat as a runner for Notre Dame. They're the sixth-ranked rushing team in America. First down from the 46. Barrett again pulls it. And JT Barrett will get inside Nittany Lion territory after he gains six yards on the play. Jason Kabinda, the middle linebacker with the tackle. You can already see a big part of this game plan is going to be the quarterback running of JT Barrett. Second down, pump fake, Barrett looking long. Barrett's got a receiver, and incomplete. Intended for Johnny Dixon. 
But that ball tracked down in the air by Troy Apke. He has him wide open and just doesn't put enough air on that. That ball has got to be thrown way out in front of the speedy Johnny Dixon. I know the fans here are going to want the contact before the ball arrives, but that's a mistake from Barrett. He's got to throw that ball out there when you've got Johnny Dixon, one of the fastest players on the team, out there with space. Let him go run. Third and four to 48. Can Penn State get off the field here? Barrett hands it off. Dobbins first down. Dobbins, the freshman, out of bounds at the 27. Castro Fields pushes him out, but on third and four, Buckeyes get 20. And this offensive line, while they've struggled with the false start early in this game, they have been opening up big holes in the run game all day so far. First down and 10 to the 27. Barrett pumps it again. Looking. Barrett in trouble. Barrett chopped down in the backfield for another sack, Sharif Miller. And credit the secondary, great coverage for Penn State. Well, I love what they do here, watch. As the corner sees that they're gonna try to run this same little pump and then go, he falls all the way back into coverage. Barrett's gotta hold on to the football, and then the rush finally gets to him behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of three, second and 13. Barrett, out wide. And it's caught. Hill piled up and taken down for another loss of one. Sharif Miller, who's balling out so far in the first quarter with the tackle. These types of plays look all too familiar for Buckeye fans. Whether it was against Clemson or Oklahoma, they went side to side far too often, not threatening the defense down the field and allowed the defenses to play more aggressive, and we're seeing that play out here against Penn State. Third and 14 at the 31. Mike Weber comes back in. Barry. Caught, but not enough for first. Austin Mack with the reception. A six-yard pickup on third and 14. And it looks like the offense will stay on the field. Yeah, it does, and they're going to send Benjamin Victor onto the field. Number nine, he is a mismatch at 6'4", 195 pounds at wide receiver. But this is a huge down for this Ohio State offense. Fourth down, and they call it eight at the Penn State 25. J.T. Barrett, underneath, ball caught, and it's Hill, great tackle in space, and he's short of the first down, and that'll be the last play of the quarter, Penn State will get it when we come back. Welcome back to Fox College Football presented by Volkswagen, the Horseshoe, Ohio Stadium, Columbus, Ohio, 14-3. We start the second quarter. Penn State with the lead in the football at their own 19. Saquon Barkley looking to get on track offensively. He's already run a kickoff back 97 yards for the touchdown. First down. And McSorley running it. Sorley gets to the 25, Jordan Fuller with the tackle, a six-yard gain. Well, if I were to tell you that at the end of the first quarter, Penn State would have negative 10 rushing yards, 43 passing yards, and only two first downs, what, what do you think the score would be? I'd probably say 14-3 the other direction, but it's the kickoff return for a touchdown, the short field, Nittany Lions capitalized, and they got the 14-3 advantage. Second down and four at the 25. It's Sorley underneath. First down, Penn State, as uh, Kosicki, the tight end, makes the catch, found a soft spot, and gains 10. This offense has got to be so creative because the defense is key on Saquon Barkley with, at times, eight or nine different guys with their eyes all over him, so they've got to find ways to get McSorley and Kosicki going in order to open up space for Barkley. First down to the 35. The 
McSorley. Looking over the middle and incomplete. Jawan Johnson, the intended receiver, but that ball thrown behind him. And that brings up second and long. I always thought as a quarterback, one of the hardest things to do was to scoot up in the pocket and have to get your momentum going towards the line of scrimmage and then have to throw a crossing route because it needs a little touch and nuance to get it out there as a catchable ball in front of the wide receiver. Second and 10 at the 35. Barkley's touches offensively have been limited. McSorley to throw it. McSorley in trouble, dances, fires to the sideline, caught, but an immediate hit by Denzel Ward as he wrapped up Jawan Johnson. Ward had great coverage and closed with great speed, but Johnson still able to make the catch and create a much shorter opportunity here on third down. On this down and distance, it's still viable to hand the football off. And the entire playbook is at your disposal for Penn State. Third and four. McSorley to throw it. McSorley in trouble on the move and he has his receiver for a first down. Gasicki again. So on third and four, Penn State gets 11. I love the way McSorley dances in the pocket. He's the one that finds the space. The rush is gonna get to him. He finds the crease, gets himself up, moving forward, and then delivers the quality ball across the middle to Gasicki for the conversion. That's a great play by the quarterback, Trace McSorley. Mike Gasicki already four catches, 28 yards. That makes it first down and 10 for Penn State at the Ohio State 48. Now Barkley running it straight ahead. And Saquon Barkley picks up a couple. Denzel Ward with the tackle. Barkley's going to have to leave the field here. Lost his shoe. Well, they don't lose much. I know Barkley's amazing, but Miles Sanders was the number one running back out of Pennsylvania the year after Barkley came out as the number one running back in Pennsylvania. And he has some juice at 5'11 and 215. He's a sophomore from Pittsburgh. Second and seven at the 45. McSorley lobs it up the sideline. And a flag on the play. Incomplete. Jerome Baker covering. Jonathan Holland. Penn State does such a great job of attacking the inside receiver. They believe that linebackers and safeties, and here the linebacker Best Jerome Baker. Center. Defense number 18. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. They want to attack those guys in man-to-man -man coverage. I thought it was more of a hold earlier than it was pass interference there towards the end of the route. But Baker, normally incredibly athletic, just had too much contact there with Jonathan Holland, who's the backup tight end, who's shoving in for Gusecki there into the slot. First down at the 36 for Penn State. Barkley. Barkley breaks it up. Barkley's going to get a block. McSorley in front of him. Touchdown, Nittany Lions. 36 yards. They're going to be slanting the defense. And as this player comes to the defensive end, watch Gasecki as he goes across to get the key block. That's the one that seals it, and then Barkley is able to get through the line of scrimmage before bouncing it out to the left, and then he turns on the Jets. This guy is just dynamic. I have not seen a player with this dynamic and rare combination of speed and birth, burst athleticism that Barkley has, and they're going to be taking a look to see if he stayed in bounds. And that one is close. It looks like his heel might be on the white line there just outside of the two-yard line.
so difficult to tell. It's that step. It's the right foot that may have been just out. This step right here. Boy, that, Boy, that's that, looks, that looks in to me. Ruling on a field is a touchdown. I'm conflicted with this guy, Gus. Why? After further review, the ruling on the field of touchdown stands. He's a feather of lead. A feather of lead. That's right. He dances and explodes and has bursts like he's light as a feather, and yet when contacted, it's as if he's filled with lead. He's got small back skills in a big back body. He's got hands like a third down back, and yet you can give it to him 30 times. What a sensational player. He's returned 197 yards for a touchdown. He's now rushed three times for 35 yards of a touchdown, caught three passes for 23 yards. Saquon Barkley, a superstar at Penn State leads Ohio State on the road. Presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by State Farm. Here to help life go right. And by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. The Nittany Lion getting a big workout early. Penn State with 21 points. And that last drive, a very good one going seven plays, 81 yards. Penn State scoring in three minutes and 20 seconds. They took over at their own 19. Well, and having the off week helps Penn State before playing Michigan last week. And they came out with new wrinkles and great energy, and they were efficient. But the off week has certainly hurt Ohio State. They came out, and they've been sloppy so far, making mistakes, in particular on offense with the turnover and some penalties. Penn State sends it away. K.J. Hill. Starts from the five-yard line. Hill with a lane. Hill with a 30. And Hill crosses the 35, goes down at the 37-yard line, a 32-yard return. Don't forget to check out Breaking the Huddle with Joel Klatt on Facebook Live Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, sponsored by Dr. Pepper. There will be a lot to get into this week as the first release of the college football playoff rankings come out. I'm sure there'll be plenty to talk about. First down to the 37 for Barrett and the Buckeyes offense. And they give it up to Weber. Ohio State not having any problems running the football. Yeah, and it's whether it's been Weber or Dobbins, but more specifically Dobbins. Dobbins has run it for 12 and a half yards per carry. The offensive line has been good in the run game. They've created these situations, second and short, where then you can attack the field down the field. Second and four at the 43. Weber remains in the game. And State. Looks like they're showing blitz. Now they back out of it. Here's a handoff to Weber in the first down for the Bucks. Now previously in this game, we've seen them try to get, I feel like, a little cute, throwing out those bubble screens, trying to play the side-to-side -side game when the vertical game, namely in the run, has been so effective for them. They can march down the field. If I was Ohio State and Urban Meyer, I would force Penn State to bring all the safeties up to commit more resources to the run game before I started to throw the football around. After the five yard gain, first and 10 of the 48 for Ohio State. And here comes J.D. Barrett wide open on the sideline. And this is Mack, and Mack crawls his way down to the 16. Koa Farmer with the tackle. Great throw by J.T. Barrett, 36 yards. He's gonna be coming all the way across the formation and it's the play action fake that allows him to get so open utilizing that quality run game to influence the linebackers and safeties and get them open first down to the 16 and Weber runs into a pile of white jerseys Cawthron leading the way that's Curtis Cawthron Curtis Conrad, 
That defense is very stout down the middle. A couple of seniors in there, a defensive tackle. Curtis and Parker Cothran, Jason Cabinda, Marcus Allen, the senior safety. And that's certainly the mark of any great defense is the strength right down the middle. Second down and nine. Barrett to throw. Barrett in the end zone. Touchdown, Buckeyes. McLaurin. Terry McLaurin. I thought the route was really made by Baugh. He's going to go up, and then McLaurin is going to actually come to the inside. And as McLaurin comes to the inside, the defense clears out. Barrett gives him a perfect ball right on the face mask. And the Buckeyes get their first touchdown of the day. 91st touchdown pass by Barrett. And the extra point is good. Ohio State finally getting six points. Fox College football is presented by Volkswagen. Why settle for an SUV when you can have an SUVW? 21 to 10, JT Barrett breaks Drew Brees' record with his 91st touchdown pass. Sets a Big Ten record now, but more importantly, the Ohio State offense is finally starting to get a rhythm. Yeah, and, and maybe more importantly, Kevin Wilson, the coordinator. Remember, this is the third coordinator that JT Barrett has played for here at, at Ohio State. And I felt like that series, everybody was more on the same page for the Buckeyes, whether it's play callers or quarterbacks or even some of the running backs and wide receivers. Nurnberger sends it away. And it's fielded at the 10-yard line. Ohio State refusing to kick the ball deep as Farmer returns it. And the Nittany Lions will start from the 21. Time now for the winning duo sponsored by Volkswagen. Well, Why settle for an SUV when you can have an SUVW? Barkley and McSorley, they've been really good so far today. I mean, it started with a bang. Saquon Barkley, 97 yards on that kick return. And then the rush TD on the last series. I think McSorley, though, he has quietly kind of settled down. It was his ability to gain a few yards on the ground himself rushing the football. It kind of opened some things up for that touchdown run of Barkley. Is it looks like Ohio State's going to have to re-kick this. I didn't hear an announcement or see a flag. I don't quite understand what's going on. We'll try to get clarification, but Barkley's going to be coming back onto the field. Looks like offside is going to be called against Ohio State. Boy, the problems here on special teams this season for Urban Meyer's team. I tell you what, and you know what, what happens when you're trying to do a different kick, there's a different rhythm to what the kicker is doing because he's trying to attack the ball from a different angle to kind of pooch it towards the right side versus what they've been doing all year long. Let's take a look back here, see if... Yeah, you see there on the left side, certainly across that line. But the rhythm of how the Nuremberger, the kicker, is approaching the ball is different because they're trying to pooch it towards the right side. And now Penn State is going to adjust, and Barkley's more in the middle of the field, even, I would say, kind of the left middle of the field, and will try to go catch this ball if they pooch it. He's already returned 197 yards for a touchdown in this game. He'll pooch it again. And fielded at the 19-yard line by Farmer. Farmer gets outside with a block. Go on, Farmer. Still running and finally goes out of bounds as he crosses the Ohio State 25. Well, everyone gets bunched up on the right side, and Koa Farmer, a linebacker who receives the pooch kick, and you see all these gray jerseys getting themselves way too far out of position. He spins around, there's nobody there. Just a total lack of assignment, missed assignment, maybe lack of discipline on that side with the kickoff is allowing for huge plays for Penn State. The offside 
negates the quality kick, and now Penn State with a short field. That's a 60-yard return. Ohio State may need to just kick the ball out of bounds and give it to him at the 35. It might be better than what's going on now. First down and 10. And Barkley running the football. Well, capitalizing on mistakes. That is always such an important part of these big games. And getting a short field for the second time. Remember, it was the turnover of Ohio State's first series that created the first short field. Ohio Penn State was able to put it in the end zone. Second down and eight at the 21. McSorley to throw. Steps up with a lane. Caught on the sideline and out of bounds. A flag on the play. Gasicki with the reception. Yeah, he, he was out of bounds too early. He was trying to keep himself in bounds, but he steps just out, didn't quite reestablish himself before receiving that. Illegal touching of forward pass. Offense number 88. Went out of bounds on his own. Came back in, was the first to touch the pass. Lost it down at the previous spot. Second down. And that was a touch wrong there because. When you go out on your own accord, here's a guy sicky kind of top of your screen right there. You go out on your own accord, you just can't touch the ball, even if you reestablish. Now, if he had been forced out, he can reestablish himself, then be the first to touch the ball and receive that catch. But because he just did that on his own, that ball cannot go in 88's direction. Third down and eight at the 21. Trace McSorley lobs it in the corner. He's got a man picked off. Buckeyes have it. David Webb. But there is a flag. Well, this place is not going to be happy. Damon Arnett is going to get called for the pass interference. Here's number three, Damon Arnett. Interference. Defense number seven. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, they're going to call that on Damon Webb, and that's not even close to a pass interference. It's really not a pass interference even on Damon Arnett. And Webb's just the one that came over and caught the ball. I, you know, either so way. Been, I, I believe the official meant Damon Arnett number three. I think he did, and they just called the wrong number. But either way, even calling that on Arnett number three, that, that was just not a pass interference. So it's first and goal at the six-yard line for Penn State. Barkley in the backfield. McSorley follows him. Gets outside. Touchdown, Nittany Lions. And Penn State takes a 27-10 lead with 8.06 to play in the second quarter. Well, McSorley gets the edge. And the athletic quarterback dives for the pylon, able to get it just inside. And the Nittany Lions firing on all cylinders now. Three rushing touchdowns for McSorley last week against Michigan. Tyler Davis in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. Penn State with an excellent first half here in Columbus. Coach Franklin, a superstar coach in the Big Ten, and his team has it going early. Nittany Lions up 18 here in Columbus. Rob, so with you. Coming up on the State Farm halftime highlights from that other team a tie atop the Big Ten East Michigan State plus coach wants that guys is in all his glory back in the production truck he's breaking down Saquon Barkley's kickoff return he's barking out terms like double fours double fives sideline <laughs> break left double team it's it's glorious you're gonna enjoy it let, let me break it down for you fast <laughs> KJ Hill deep for the Buckeyes and this one will go out of the end zone for a touchback. So Ohio State 
has given up a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, a 60-yard kickoff return as well. Six penalties. They've allowed two sacks. The Buckeyes have major issues. Yeah, they also fumbled the ball and created a short field for Penn State, and that's really been the difference. You know, this Penn State team, you got to give them a lot of credit because they've been able to come out and then capitalize on those mistakes. Both times that the Nittany Lion offense has had short fields, they've gotten the ball in the end zone. You've got to give Trace McSorley a lot of credit along with those offensive linemen and running back Saquon Barker. First down at the 25 for J.T. Barrett. And Barrett to throw it on first down. Swings it out and throws that one behind Mike Weber. Well, the first down run has been open for Ohio State, and that's created the shorter second down opportunities. Every time they've come out and tried to throw it sideways on first down, they've been in this situation, second and long behind schedule on offense. Second down and 10. Barrett, quarterback run. And Barrett. Close to a first down as he crosses the 30 and gets up to the 34. Manny Bowen, Christian Campbell combining on the tackle after the nine-yard gain. Nice run there from Barrett and a good play call. Getting them into this short yardage situation here on third down. Third down and one at the 34. Barrett will run it. Has a first down. And more, J.T. Barrett crosses midfield and steps out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Marcus Allen pushing him out of play. Well, they're going to bring the motion across, and that motion ends up taking the eyes of the linebackers over to the right side of the defense, and Barrett ends up running back to his right side to a huge gap, an open field for the fir first down, and lots more. He picks up 23, first down at the 43. Barrett, all day to throw it. Now Barrett dancing, wants to run it, and Barrett just wrestled down at the 41 by Manny Bowen. A three-yard gain. Well, this game plan has certainly been Barrett-centric. You know, whether he's running the ball or has it in his hands to throw it, they're asking their senior, their leader, to do a lot today. Second and seven, Barrett. Near side, Weber squares his shoulders, powers forward, picks up a first down. As he gets to the Penn State 31, Jason Cabinda with the tackle. Good blocks on the outside there, and a nice aggressive run from Weber to make sure that they're moving the chains. So first down at the 31-yard line. Barrett again with running room. And somewhere Tim Tebow is watching this game and he's, he's saying, I used to do that. I was going to say, this looks familiar, right? He's absolutely thinking that. And Barrett certainly athletic enough and he has run the ball well so far. Over six yards per carry so far today. Second and five to the 26. Barrett to the far side. Caught by Hill. And K.J. Hill powers his way to the 15. Campbell, Marcus Salmon. 11-yard gain. Nobody there on the left side. Barrett snaps it quickly and gets the ball out to a one-on-one. -on -one. Gets the block and a conversion breakdown from Penn State's defense that Barrett took advantage of. First down to the 15-yard line for Ohio State. And this is Weber. Tough sledding for Mike Weber as Marcus Allen came up and chopped him down. But it's a five-yard gain. Boy, that's an aggressive safety right there. Senior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 6'2", 207. And when he comes in to fill for the run, boy, he brings some serious thunder with him. Charge timeout, Penn State. They're first. And Penn State calls a timeout. Ohio State knocking on the door, down 28-10. Coach Franklin, Nittany Lions. Let's go right now. Beat Ohio State. We are Urban Buckeyes. Let's go right now. Beat Penn State. Go Bucks. All right, some famous alums. Two brilliant head coaches, James Franklin and Urban Meyer. Franklin getting the best of Coach Meyer last year at State College.
And right now his team with a 28-10 lead. But Ohio State faced with a second and five at the Penn State 10. Weber, nothing. He'll lose a yard on the play. Depending on the spot, Robert Windsor with the tackle for Penn State. Well, that's a big third down here. Ohio State's got to capitalize with a touchdown on this drive. They need five on third and five. Barrett's been successful running the football. Barrett looking, lobs it in the corner. Incomplete on a flag on the play. Johnny Dixon, the intended receiver, they held him up. Grant Haley. Well, as they go and finding the hands for Haley, they go up top. And there certainly was pushing both ways, but based on the last series when Payne State got the call, I felt like that was going to go Ohio State's way. Haley gets the call against him, and Penn State is now backed up. Going to try to force a goal line stand here. First down inside the five. From the two. Weber in the backfield with Barrett. They give it to him. Touchdown, Ohio State. Watch this offensive line just mash down the defensive line for Penn State. Great movement, and Weber walks into the end zone. That's a terrific answer. Aided by that pass interference, they capitalize and stick it in the end zone. So with 4.56 to go, Nurnberger's extra point is good. 28-17, high scoring game in the first half. In Columbus, two versus six, back after this. Today's aerial coverage is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. Things starting to go better now for Ohio State. As they go 10 plays covering 75 yards, eating up three minutes and 10 seconds. And the problem is now they got to have this kickoff unit on the field. And this is the one area where Ohio State has just been, well, frankly, pitiful today. And they pooch it again. Farmer. And he goes out of bounds at the 30. Let's check in with Greg Wolf for an update in Los Angeles. All right, Gus, we have an upset alert in Ames, Iowa. Iowa State cracked the top 25 for the first time in 12 years, facing number four TCU, Kyle Kemp to Hakeem Butler. Four yard touchdown, Cyclones lead 14 to nothing, second quarter. Gus, Joel, back to you. I tell you, that's, that's a tough place to play. I know people smirk at that, but it is up there at Ames, Iowa. And this team has got it going. They're five and two in their last seven Big 12 games after going two and 22 in their previous 24. So Matt Campbell's doing a heck of a job there for the Cyclones. Crowd starting to get into it now in Columbus. Penn State takes over at their own 30. McSorley. Setting up a screen, McSorley, and a flag on the play. As Sam Hubbard, the money man, got into the backfield. I thought he might have grabbed his face mask. Defense number six. 15 yards to the previous spot. Automatic first stop. Now this is just one of those areas where McSorley tries to duck. Hubbard goes in in that left hand. See how he turns the helmet? and then grabs even that second little grab that draws the flag. Excellent effort from Hubbard, almost unavoidable, but yes, that's a face mask. It will create even better field position and a great opportunity here for Penn State. Seven penalties, 59 yards against the Buckeyes in the first half. That's an awfully tough position to be in as a defensive end because he goes up to block the throw as the throw is being faked, and then as he's coming down, there's almost no other place for his hand to go. First down of the 45 for the Nittany Lions. 
Bartley motions into the backfield, takes the snap, hands it off to McSorley. And McSorley dragged down at the 46. Dante Booker with the tackle. I was wondering when we were going to see Barkley come back and actually receive that snap. This is the formation that they ran on the second play of the game against Michigan. Barkley ran it for a touchdown. Ohio State was ready. Second down and nine to the 46. 420 to play in the first half. McSorley, under pressure, runs it. McSorley looking for the first down, and he's short of it. About a yard, yard and a half. As Chris Worley chases him out of bounds. Ohio State tried to run a blitz to the wide side of the field, but it left a gap over there to the Penn State left, and McSorley saw it, correctly identified the area. Barkley did a nice job getting a block. And McSorley took off and created this a short yardage opportunity. Third down and one. Let's see if McSorley runs it. Needing only a yard. Now a timeout call by Ohio, timeout State. State. Ohio State. They're, They're first. first. Undefeated. Penn State Nittany Lions at 7-0, ranked second in the nation with a 28-17 lead. On the road against Ohio State, 6-1, their only loss at home to Oklahoma. Baker Mayfield and company, third down and one. Barkley, first down Penn State. Chris Worley with the tackle. Solid drive here from Penn State. Really set up by the feet of McSorley, getting away from the rush and creating that short yardage situation where Barkley can basically just dive for the first down. They convert now. They're in business here on the plus side of the 50. At the Ohio State 42. And Barkley submarining will get to the 38, Chris Worley brings him down again. But watch just the elusiveness of Barkley as Dante Booker, number 33, is going to be totally unblocked. He's got him basically dead to rights. And Barkley just swiftly ducks right under him, dives and gains some positive yards. Six carries, 45 yards and a touchdown for Saquon Barkley. Second and six at the 38. Sorley steps up, throws to the sideline, and he skips that one to his intended receiver, Deshaun Hamilton. Third and six coming up. This is the opportunity that Ohio State wanted to get. Is a third down opportunity on this series. With a guy like Bosa out there and all these pass rushers, Greg Schiano, normally very aggressive, has played more zone coverage, trying to allow his great pass rushers to get up the field and get to the quarterback. Third down and six at the 38. Nick Sorley hands it to Barkley, and he won't get it. Barkley stopped by Nick Bosa. And that brings up fourth down and four. Well, he's got a decision to make, and James Franklin is thinking about it on the sideline. I think he's going to let the clock go down, take a timeout, and they'll talk about it. Remember, Penn State received the opening kickoff. Barkley took it back, but that means that Ohio State receives the kickoff to begin the third quarter. So James Franklin is going to debate whether to keep his offense on the field or kick it off, punt it to J.T. Barrett. And the fact that he took the delay and not the timeout means that he'll punt it away. Try to pin Ohio State inside their own 10. 
delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. So if you're a Buckeye fan, everything that could go wrong went wrong in that first half. Yeah, and there's still life, right? Because that man, JT Barrett, has played really well. He's played well running the football, leading them in rushing with 63 yards. It's 12 of 16 for 100 yards, throwing it. Also has a touchdown, and now he'll have the ball in his hands with about a minute uh, 25 left after this kick. Third punt of the game for Blake Gilligan. K.J. Hill, the deep man, and he has it at the 14. And now a quick message from Duracell. Duracell is the number one trusted brand. JT Barrett getting some instructions on the Ohio State sideline. Only three-time captain in Buckeye history. And what a career. And he's going to be perfect in this type of situation because he's had so much experience. With 131 left, two timeouts, they can run the football on first down, try to open up the defense for the play-action pass on second. First down at the 14 for Ohio State. Barrett under pressure. Throws it. Weber with the catch, but he is stuck. Troy Apke reading that play. A seven-yard loss. They're going to bring the pressure, and then the safety is going to go all the way up. Apke, and he reads it perfectly. Just a total misdiagnosis from Baird, who threw it right into Apke, who was sinking down, covering up for the blitzing linebacker. Second down and 17. A minute to go. Weber. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage. With 50 seconds to go and a timeout called by the Nittany Lions. No, Sharif you. Miller with the tackle. James Franklin is doing a wonderful job of managing this situation. Rather than taking a timeout before the punt, he takes the delay a game. It saves two timeouts, and he'll take one now. Up 28-17. 28-17, Penn State. Third down at 16. At the eight-yard line for the Buckeyes. JT Barrett runs it with room. And JT Barrett gets to the 22 before being stopped. 14-yard gain as Jason Cabinda makes the tackle. That's why it was so brilliant to take the delay before the punt and save the two timeouts. James Franklin creating this situation for his football team. What a smart decision by the head coach. And we don't see that a lot in college football. There's so much mismanagement of the clock and of situations. And this situation was managed perfectly by Franklin. Just a smart move creating an opportunity for his football team. But for Ohio State, I'm starting to Get confused, Joel, on why this offense continues to go side to side. It hasn't worked for him. Not at all, in particular on first down, and you along with every other Buckeye fan sitting at home. Chris Middle punted away inside his own 10. His second punt of the game. DeAndre Tompkins back deep, and this one shanked. Takes an Ohio State bounce, luckily, and finally. Down at the 37. A 40 yard punt. I mean, these special teams, coach called them an abomination a few weeks ago, and they've certainly played that way today. Chrisman just dropped the snap. That's why he shanked it, is because he had to rush so hard. I mean, the snap was right in his chest, and he just flat dropped it. Got the fortunate roll, creating a longer field for Penn State. But Penn State does have explosive capability. Remember, they like to get into matchup situations. They love Gusecki down the field. Gusecki is one of the great deep ball catchers in college football because of his height, his size, and his ability to jump. This is a perfect situation for him. Penn State out of timeouts. 29 seconds remaining in the first half. Offense. 
Five-yard penalty, still first down. And some confusion there. The clock started before Penn State realized it. McSorley didn't have his eyes up at the play clock. And we're going to go five more yards here in this situation. That makes it more difficult because here's the deal. When no timeouts, the ball has to travel either past the first down marker or outside of the numbers. You cannot throw this ball on the interior of the field, and that's why they're just going to take a knee now. Yeah, they do. But a great first half for Penn State. 28-17. The Nittany Lions ran the opening kickoff. 97 yards. Saquon Barkley. Ohio State turnovers, miscues on special teams, but they're only down 28-17. Coming up after a short break, we'll send you to Mike Hill in Los Angeles for more college football coverage. Welcome back to Columbus. We're ready for the second half. This is Fox College Football presented by Volkswagen. 28-17, our score, Penn State leading the Ohio State Buckeyes. Gus Johnson along with Joel Klatt for Penn State. They played a great first half yeah. for Ohio State. They played an awful first half, <laughs> and the score is still 28-17. You cold? Yes, I am, but you're a so tough guy. So you're a I. tough guy. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying to fool anybody. Uh, but, yes, I mean, that first half, it, it really went – as good for Penn State as it possibly could. And it started with that you know, big return from Saquon Barkley, and you leave it to your stars to start the thing off. And he did that, and he's our forward unstoppable player of that first half. Saquon Barkley takes the opening kickoff, 97 yards. It's a special teams gap once again for this Ohio State team. Barkley takes advantage, and he was terrific the entirety of the half. He ran it for almost 50 yards. He had a couple of catches. Three of them for 23 yards. He got in the end zone on that run towards the end of the half in the second quarter. He's been terrific and has allowed Penn State to build this lead to 28-17, although Ohio State outside of the kickoff team has really been playing some good football. 244 total yards. Their offense has looked pretty good. They're 3 of 7 on third down. That needs to get cleaned up, but the penalties have also been a problem. This kid right here, though, my goodness, he is as good as advertised. Saquon Barkley, Heisman Trophy candidate. Some feel that he is the number one player in the country when it comes to that award. And he is balling out today, that 97-yard kickoff return for touchdown on the opening play. Setting the tone for Penn State in the first half. Let's see how Ohio State responds to adversity. They'll get the football to start the second half. K.J. Hill is the deep man, along with Antonio Williams. Tyler Davis sends it away. Hill will start from the two. Crosses the 20 all the way up to the 24-yard line. Nick Scott with the tackle on special teams. Well, we're going to see what this Buckeye team is made of. And they battled back. And listen, it did not start out pretty. The turnover on the first series offensively led to the second touchdown for Penn State. And they were quickly down in that 14-0 hole. But they fought back. And JT Barrett in particular, he played a very efficient and quality first half. He ran it 11 times. He was 13 of 17, throwing the football with a touchdown. He's going to have to play big here in the second. First down and 10 at the 24 for Ohio State. Barrett, play action. Barrett throws it. Has a receiver. Flag on the play. K.J. Hill with the reception. And Hill gets to the 43. Marcus Allen with the tackle. But let's see. What the call is. I thought there was a pretty clear hold on the Penn State secondary on a player that wasn't even intended to catch that ball. Holding. Defense number 15. Penalties declined. Result of the play is a first down. So a first down for Ohio State. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. 
And a couple of thoughts from Urban Meyer at the break. Well, it was pretty simple. His message, how about we tackle some people on the kickoff? He said, right now I am questioning my personnel. I also spoke to Coach Franklin. He said, well, you know, we got a lot of football to be played. We need to come out as fast as we did in the first. A 24-yard gain on the last play, first and 10 of the 48. And here's J.K. Dobbins, and Dobbins is wrestled down. And this time it's Sharif Miller. We've been calling his name all day for the Penn State defense. He is athletic, 6'5", 257 pounds, just a sophomore, and he has played one heck of a game so far. Two-yard pickup. Barrett now. Hill. Hill gets to the sideline. And Hill about a yard short of a first down. As finally, Troy Apke makes the tackle. And they finally got some blocks on the outside. That type of a play was not working in the first half because they were not blocking efficiently with their wide receivers. They get them blocked up in a successful play. Gain of seven. First down now as Dobbin sidesteps him in. Manny Bowen finally bring him down. Brings him down. And he gains seven. And the man that was playing so well so far made a play on this drive. Sharif Miller. He's the one down for Penn State, grabbing at the back of that left leg. James Franklin back on the field, and Ohio State fans not happy. Their offense slowed up a bit by Sharif Miller's temporary injury. This offense certainly has some rhythm now, and they're utilizing the tempo with JT Barrett at the helm, getting up to the line of scrimmage and getting these easy positive yards, whether it's on the outside or in between the tackles. First down and 10 of the 36. Dobbins straight ahead. And he'll get to the 30. Marcus Allen tackles the freshman. Dobbins is Ohio State's leading rusher and has the second most rushing yards among freshmen nationally behind Jonathan Taylor of Wisconsin. Second and four after the six-yard game. JT sprints out, throws on the move, has his receiver out of bounds. C.J. Saunders. Clutch throw by Barrett, gain of 13. And if he didn't have a player, which was Shaka Tony right in his face, he might have been able to put that on the money, and that could have been six, but Tony was right in his face, and it affected the throw. First down to the 17. Barrett runs it. And JT Barrett stopped by Apke, but not before he gets close to the 10-yard line. I guarantee you that was a gut-check halftime for this Ohio State Buckeye team, and the leaders and the players had to take ownership, and Barrett comes out here on the first series, and he's playing his best football. Second down and six of the 13, and some movement on the right side. Ball start, offense number 59. Five-yard penalty, still second down. That's the fourth false start penalty of the game for the Ohio State offense. And the third on the right side of that offensive line, and that's the side that Urban Meyer has stressed to everyone, whether it's the local press or the national media. He knows that if his right side of his offensive line can play more consistently and dominate games, they've got a chance to be very special. Second down and 11. Barrett throws it. Dobbins in space. Dobbins goes nowhere. Bottled up, taken down. Farmer, Apke combining on the tackle. The running back swing route has done absolutely nothing today for Ohio State. I'd venture a guess if you go back and total them all up, it would be negative yards trying to throw the ball to the running back on the outside. Penn State has been ready for it, and Ohio State has not adjusted and has created a big, long third down scenario. Third down and 12 at the 19. JT Barrett fires in the end zone. And incomplete. Hill, the intended receiver, looked like he juggled it. And that brings up fourth down. And it was a perfect throw from JT Barrett. On this throw, you want to give him a bit of a back shoulder, let him adjust, and out of bounds and bobbling it. 
they were letting him some contact go. You know, in the first half, that contact from Hall Haley would have drawn a flag. On both sides, they called a pass interference on Ohio State. They've called a pass interference on Penn State in the end zone for contact that was less egregious than what we just saw there. So some real inconsistencies playing out from the officiating crew here today. So Nurnberger in to attempt a 36-yarder, good from 38 today. And this one is good as well. Ohio State settles for the field goal, 28-20. Fox College football is sponsored by Ford. Going further so you can. And by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Mortgage confidently. 28-20. JT Barrett and the Ohio State offense putting three points on the board. Their opening drive of the second half. So we've got an eight-point ball game. As you take a look, 10 plays, 57 yards. Bucks eating up 323. Biggest question mark of this entire team, though, is on the field right now. Kickoff team. Saquon Barkley, the deep man. Nuremberger sends it away. Kicks this one short again. Field it on the run. And Penn State will start around the 30-yard line. Coming up next, it's game four of the World Series. After the Dodgers won game one, the Astros have won the last two and taken a two to one lead. Tonight, the Dodgers try to even the series. The Astros look to take one step closer to history. Astros have never won the World Series. The Dodgers have not won since Kirk Gibson in 1988. First down and 10 at the 30-yard line for Penn State. Hands it off, Barkley, and Barkley tackle behind the line of scrimmage by Tyquan Lewis. Trey Sprinkle in as well. There was a whole host of Buckeyes in there beating their man. This defensive line is the key to stopping Saquon Barkley. If you allow Barkley to get to the second level and run on linebackers, he's too quick, he's too strong. The defensive line has to dominate. Second down and 13 at the 27. Here's the pitch. Barkley gets outside and goes out of bounds. A flag on the play, though. Damon Webb pushes him out. I thought there was a hold on Penn State out there on the outside, maybe on wide receiver Juwan Johnson, number 84. Now they're just discussing with Urban Meyer. He's trying to get the situation, whether he wants to take it or decline it. He's going to decline this penalty. Holding. Offense number 84. Penalty supply. Third down. So Juwan Johnson is called for the hold. And that makes it third down and 11. Fans here in Columbus. Fired up. Let's see if Ohio State brings pressure on third and 11. McSorley in trouble. Breaks a tackle. McSorley. Does he get the first down? Looks like he did. What a play from McSorley. First. The escapability back initially. Look at all the Buckeyes in the backfield, and he gets away from Jalen Holmes, the senior, at 275, it's 270 pounds, and then the speed to get to the corner, outrunning Malik Harrison to the first down marker. They get 12 on third and 11, first and 10 now for Penn State. McSorley up top, incomplete, intended for Deshaun Hamilton. That ball thrown high. They were trying that run-pass option, the RPO you've heard so much about in college football. 
McSorley never got his feet set. The ball sailed high. Too much for Deshaun Hamilton. Well, you're starting to notice a lot of great jerseys in the backfield of Penn State. Ohio State getting pressure, second and ten at the 41. McSorley, sideline, throws a strike to Tompkins, and a first down for the Nittany Lions. What a great route by DeAndre Tompkins. Watch out, he's going to have man coverage, and he's going to burst and force the defensive back to cover deep before falling out of the route and creating a little bit of space. Good timing from Trace McSorley. That's an easy completion, a long throw, but an easy completion for Penn State. Back-to-back 12-yard -back gains, first down. Barkley gets outside, turns a corner, and he's tracked down from behind. Dante Booker, the junior from Akron. Beautiful tackle. I mean, Barkley is dead to rights in the backfield. Watch this burst, and he almost gets the edge. Excellent effort from Dante Booker to get him down to the ground, and he would have been gone if Booker doesn't make that tackle. Gain of four, second and six. McSorley over the middle, caught, and Johnson holds on to the ball somehow, and he got Robert down at the 39. What an important completion there, because it creates this short yard situation. In the first half, they've been leaning on their great running back, Saquon Barkley, in these moments on third and short. This time, he'll split out to the bottom of your screen as a wide receiver. Third down and three. Barkley motions into the backfield. They give it to him, and he has the first down. Booker covering him up. And there's an injured player on the field. It's Ryan Bates, the left tackle. It's the left tackle number 52. As he's blocking and he's going to go up. And then right here at the end of the play, Barkley lands right on his left leg. 28-20. We'll take a break. Back after this. Penn State has found ways to keep this drive alive on third and 11 of the 29. They got 12. On third and three, they got four for first down. So now the Nittany Lions face with the first and ten at the Ohio State 36. It's Sorley to Barkley. Barkley spins, can't get out of trouble. And he'll be tackled behind the line of scrimmage, Damon Arnett. This is really only the second series that we've seen Penn State drive the ball methodically. And there's the blitz from the outside. Damon Arnett up the corner gets Barkley to the ground. Loss of one, second down and 11. McSorley. Fires a deep ball down the field. Intercepted. Ohio State. Denzel Ward. Hurt my feelings. What a play in the back in the back of the end zone with DeAndre Tompkins. Tompkins is pushing off there. The ball looks like it's in Tompkins' hands, and then at the end, Denzel Ward rips it away once he's on the ground. What an amazing play from Denzel Ward. The junior from the state of Ohio, 5'10", 191 pounds. That ruling is under further review.
This is going to be an interesting review because once we see the replay, it actually looks like Tompkins might have had control of that ball. But remember, he would have to have control through the process I, of going to the ground. I don't know if you can say that, Joel. If he had control, it didn't look like he had control of that ball. It looks like it was a tie. Yeah, it's like 50-50 or 60-40 or somewhere in that neighborhood. And I just don't think does there's... Tie, does a tie go to the runner? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe tonight. I don't know about here. Uh, I will tell you, though, that there's a lot going on. Ball never hits the ground. I don't think they can reverse it. Let's join our rules analyst, Dean Blandino, in Los Angeles. Dino, what do you think here? This is really close. I'm like you guys. This is going to be tough to overturn. There is that one angle where it looks like the receiver actually has control of it going to the ground. But then when they land, you kind of lose sight of the football. And then it's basically survival of the fittest. The officials on the field ruled Ohio State football. Looks like it could be a catch, but this is going to be tough to overturn. Dean, I couldn't agree more. I think if they signaled touchdown, it would have stayed a touchdown. The fact that they called this an interception, I believe it will remain an interception based on the fact there's just no evidence. See, right there, I'm thinking to myself, okay, that's Tompkins' ball. But the, the left hand, you see, the gray glove is of Denzel Ward, the defensive back, and then he clearly wrestles it away when they're on the ground. That is an incredibly tough call. I would agree. Call. So this is either an interception or and a it touchdown. it has to be clear and obvious. After further review, the Penn State player was in pos possession of the ball when he landed on the ground. As a result, it's a Penn State touchdown. Wow! What a play! So, Joel, you were right. Well, I thought they would stay with the call. I didn't think it was that obvious, in particular, through the process of going to the ground. Clearly didn't hang on to it as Ward essentially ripped it out and then controlled it once they were on the ground. I'm a bit stunned that that call was reversed. Again, whatever was called on the field, I felt like they were going to stay with it. I'm very shocked they reversed it. I didn't think there was enough video evidence to reverse whichever call was made on the field. Extra point is good, so DeAndre Tompkins with a huge touchdown for the Nittany Lions, who take a 35-20 lead. Fox College Football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by Wendy's Fresh Never Frozen Beef Hamburgers, the official hamburger of the NCAA. Today's aerial coverage is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. Things going right for Penn State. Big time play, big time touchdown for DeAndre Tompkins to give the Nittany Lions a 35-20 lead. First touchdown of the year stolen away from Denzel Ward. All the fighting going on, going to the ground, and again, I... I thought that the officials on the field could have called that either way, touchdown or interception. My surprise is that replay had enough evidence, or in their mind, enough evidence to reverse the call on the field. Tyler Davis will kick it away. K.J. Hill, the return man for the Buckeyes. And Hill starts from his own one-yard line. And goes out of bounds around the 17. Time now for an AT&T game break. Let's go to Greg Wolf. Gus, thanks. Back to that Big 12 battle between number four TCU and 25th ranked Iowa State. Third and six from TCU seven yard line. Kenny Hill picked off. Brian Peavy 69 yard return. Couldn't convert into points, however. Missed a 26 yard field goal. Iowa State hanging on to a 14-7 lead. Gus, Joel, back to you. All right, thank you very much. First down and 10 of the 18 now for the Buckeyes. Dobbins stop and stop the freshman, turning it on, gets up the sideline and picks up a first down. 
tell you, Dobbins has been electric today. He, I think he's been the most electric Buckeye on the field offensively. That's his eighth carry. He's nearly rushing the ball for 10 yards a pop. He needs to stay on the field. They need to get him a rhythm here, giving him the ball. 75 yards rushing. They give it to him again, straight ahead. And he runs right into Christian Campbell. Well, this offense on three different drives. They've moved the ball well all day long. And on three different occasions, two drives, they had to settle for field goals. On another drive, they drove the ball all the way down and then failed to convert on fourth down. So some self-inflicted wounds once they get into the scoring position. Second down and eight. Play fake, Barrett. Delivers, caught, oh! K.J. Hill. Takes his eyes off of it and drops the football. This team is one of, if not the most talented team in the country, but they make way too many mistakes. Whether it's the specials or the drops that we've seen from their offense, the penalties, tough to overcome. Third down and eight at the 31. Underneath. And the first down, Benjamin Victor. And Victor holds on, flag on the play. And now they're saying he turned it over, and Penn State has the football. Looks like the ball was out, but this is going to be a hold earlier in the play on the opposite side of the field. On Penn State, that's what the flag is down for, something along those lines. Holding, holding, defense number 15. Ten yards from the previous spot, automatic first stop. I mean, what a break there for Ohio State. Here's the end of the play as the ball clearly comes out. Would have been a turnover. Well, no, he kind of regained possession and actually had a knee down. That would have been close if it went to a review, but as is, you know, and they might want to review that because that would have given them much more yardage. You could decline the holding. There's the hold on Grant Haley, number 15. If they were to review that, I don't think it's a fumble. This ball should be 15 yards further down the field. First down to the 41. Dobbins slicing. Kabinda tracks him down from his middle linebacker position. Nice job by Jason Kabinda. This is one of my favorite players I've ever talked to in a production meeting. Gain of two, second and eight at the 43. Dobbins again. Dobbins tackled from behind. And that'll give him enough for first down as Marcus Allen pushed him forward. He's lost his shoe, so he's going to have to come off the field. And Mike Weber, sophomore from Detroit, back in the lineup. First down at the 49 for Ohio State. JT Barrett winds up, delivers, and it's Johnny Dixon finding a soft spot, but a flag at the 30. Hold, 78, holding, 78. It's Demetrius Knox, number 78, the right guard. He's going against Robert Windsor, number 54. And Windsor did Offense a great job. 78. Ten yards to the previous spot. Three feet first down. Of attacking that left shoulder with his left shoulder, getting up the field and forcing the holding call. And now Ohio State is way behind the chains. Ten-yard penalty. First down and 20 at the 41. 5-19 and counting in the third quarter. Man, I have time to change the play. That's a delay. Before the snap, delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty, still first time. And that's a coaching error from Ohio State. They tried to change the play. The play clock was down under 10, really under 7 seconds. Barrett tried to do it quickly, but not enough time to change the play and snap the football. 
It's just amazing to watch an Urban Meyer team play an undisciplined game. First down and a long 25 to 36. 10 penalties, 79 yards for the Buckeyes. JT Barrett swings it out. Not a lot. KJ Hill. Side to side passing game. You're hearing the smattering of boos because these safeties have been so aggressive against those slot receivers for Ohio State. Marcus Allen and Troy Apke have done a terrific job all night long. Second and 23 at the 38. Weber in motion out of the backfield. Barrett throws that way. Finds Weber deep on the sideline. Hurdles and is upended by Apke. And he picks up nine. He came down awkwardly on his head. Oh my goodness. As he tried to go up and over the safety, Troy Apke. That looked awful. Third down, 14 at the 47. Weber remains in the game. Barrett delivers underneath Hill, and he will not get the first down. So that brings up fourth down as Manny Bowen prevented him from getting to the first down marker. And Barrett will step off the field. That's a great play call by Brent Pry, the defensive coordinator for Penn State. He dropped all of his coverage back in deep zone. He forced JT Barrett to throw that ball short of the first down marker. There's Brent Pry. He's been with James Franklin all the way going back to the Vanderbilt days, and he's done a great job. Chrisman sends it away. Tompkins back deep, lets it go over his head, and is down at the five. Three ten to play third quarter. Penn State with the lead. Back to Columbus after this. Welcome back, Penn State. Back on the field. Trace McSorley, as you take a look at his numbers, Saquon Barkley, 53 yards rushing. Two total touchdowns. Andre Tompkins with that huge catch on their last series for a touchdown now backed up in the shadow of their own end zone first down and ten of the six Barkley changes directions and is tackled at the goal line by Kendall Sheffield almost a safety and Barkley didn't see him and tried to spin out. Dangerous move, even for a guy as talented and explosive as Barkley. And he gets down right at the last second with that ball still in the field of play and not over the goal line. What a huge moment here for the Ohio State defense with a chance not only to put points on the board themselves but create field position for their offense as Greg Schiano tries to dial something up to stop this Penn State offense. They're going to actually look at this to make sure that that ball was completely out into the field of play and not possibly touching the goal line. Remember, it's the plane of the goal line. The ball has to be completely clear and in the field of play when he goes down. Tough to tell based on that look as he was clearly moving backwards but trying to get down once he realized Sheffield was there to make the play. There's that shin that goes down. After further review, the ruling on the field was confirmed. The runner was tackled at the one-yard line. It'll be second and nine. So a loss of five. Second down and 15. Barkley lines up in the end zone with McSorley. McSorley to pass out of the end zone. Delivers and it's caught by Juwan Johnson and he gets a first down. 
A gain of 20 on second and 15. You talk about some onions from Trace McSorley. You line up eight yards deep in the end zone and have to wait for the comeback route, and he runs it perfectly. Johnson gets open, McSorley delivers it, and then he tiptoes his way down the sideline. Nittany Lions with some breathing room now. First and 10 at the 21. McSorley hands it off to Barkley. And Barkley will get seven and a half, maybe eight yards on the play. As Dante Booker and Jerome Baker combine on the tackle. What a huge conversion. And then run after the catch. The crowd was back into it. You sense that Ohio State may get great field position out of it. And Penn State on their way with here, a second and short. Play fake. McSorley tried to swing it out to Gasicki on second and two. Questionable play call. And they had it up the middle, but they try to sneak it past the linebacker here. This is Dante Booker who comes out, and he forces McSorley to dip down, almost sidearm, like he's turning a double play. And clearly not the angle he wanted to try to get the ball to Mike Gasicki. Penn State six for nine on third down conversions, facing a third and two at their own 29. This has been Barkley all day long on these third and shorts. They give it to him, and Barkley won't get it this time. What a play on defense for Ohio State, Jordan Fuller. A four-yard loss, and Penn State has to punt. Well, Greg Schiano knew exactly what everyone else knows, is that he's going to get a run with Saquon Barkley, so he floods the area. Three linebackers stay in position, sends a safety. Jordan Fuller in to make the tackle, and how about Fuller getting one of the best down to the ground? Gillikin will punt it away from his own 11. K.J. Hill back deep for Ohio State. And here's Hill. Muffed it. Picks it up. Turns it up and finally goes down at the 23. Special teams for Ohio State has been an Achilles heel this year. Especially in this game. Boy, I'll tell you what, this is not what I expected off an off week. This team was playing so well the last time they were on the field against Nebraska, and they come out after an off week. They've got 10 penalties. They give up a kick, return for a touchdown, false starts, drop passes. Just mistake-filled game from the Buckeyes. First down, though, at the 24. Ohio State down 35-20. to 20. Penn State showing blitz. Dobbins runs into a wall. No gain on the play. Penn State has been so aggressive on first down. Their safety's playing close to the line of scrimmage. They're waiting for that side-to-side -side passing game. There have been a few times where Ohio State has been able to get a crease and some positive yardage in the run game. But this front seven, they've done a heck of a job holding that bay this Buckeyes offense. And that takes us to the end of the third quarter with a score, Penn State 35, Ohio State 20. Back for the fourth after this. Fox College football presented by Volkswagen. Start of the fourth quarter. Here in Columbus, as you take a look at the scoring by quarters, Penn State getting seven in the third, Ohio State with only three. 35 to 20 as we start the fourth. JT Barrett in the Ohio State offense from their own 24. Here's the option. Barrett keeps it. And gains a few. Well, it was a 14 point deficit for Penn State last year at home in this matchup. They scored 17, turned their season around, turned around James Franklin's tenure at Penn State. And we'll see if Ohio State can come back from 15 down here at home this year. Third down and eight at the 26. The 
comes a blitz. Barrett with time. Sideline. And Austin Mack with the reception and the first down at the 35. Mack, the sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana. This is a guy that has turned into a very consistent receiver for JT Barrett. So first down after the nine-yard gain from the 35. Barrett lets it fly again, and he whips it to Johnny Dixon. And Dixon will gain about seven on the play. Christian Campbell with the tackle. And Dixon, slow to get up. And Dixon cramping up on the Penn State sideline. Boy, Barrett, you described it so perfectly. Strong throw out to that wide side for positive yardage on first down. And they've got away from throwing those swing routes to their running backs, which have just not been successful. And they're trying to attack the defense a little bit more vertically now. College football presented by Volkswagen is sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by King's Hawaiian Foods, irresistible since 1950. 35 to 20 here in the fourth quarter. Penn State on top of Ohio State, two versus six. Partners, this has been an interesting game yeah. for both teams. Well, I mean, Penn State has capitalized on every mistake Ohio State has made, and, and you got to give them a lot. Fox College Football is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. Today's aerial coverage is brought to you by our good neighbors at State Farm. State Farm is here to help life go right. The shoe rocking now. Ohio State with the touchdown to make this a 35 to 27 game. But can they play clean for the last 11:05? If they don't make any more mistakes, you get the feeling based on the yardage and how their defense is playing that they're going to come back and win this game. But they cannot afford another mistake. And they squib this one. Takes a bounce. Viewed it at the 25. And Penn State will start at their own 30. Let's go to Los Angeles for a game break. Here's Greg Wolf. Gus, thanks. We go to South Bend. The Irish have won five consecutive games by 20 or more. Their longest streak since the 1966 National Championship team. Here's Josh Adams. He goes 77 yards. He's over 200 on the afternoon. Barkley, Bryce Love getting all the Heisman hype among running backs. Might be time to throw Adams in the mix as well. Irish lead NC State 35-14. All right, thank you very much. 11 minutes to play. 35-27. Penn State with the football at their own 30. Undefeated on the season. Ranked number two in the nation. Behind Alabama. Saquon Barkley in the backfield. McSorley hit as he throws incomplete. Ohio State dialing up pressure this time. It's Nick Bosa. And they don't have to do it with the blitz because they've got one of the pass, best pass runners in all of college football. Nick Bosa beats his man, gets in there and affects the throw. McSorley just not enough time to set his feet and make an accurate throw down the field. Second down and ten. McSorley, he'll run it with room, first down, and more as McSorley gets out of bounds inside Ohio State territory. That's a 23-yard gain. And he has made timely play after timely play. You said it earlier in the game, partner. This guy, when he's backed into a corner, he fights his hardest, whether it's a completion down the field or they're a great play call from Joe Moorhead, the offensive coordinator, and McSorley finds space for a big first down now on the other side of the 50. Goes all the way back to last year, Penn State. A terrific second-half team because of the decisions of this man. First down. McSorley. Looking over the middle, and incomplete. Jawan Johnson drops it, but a flag on the play. They're going to get a hold right in the middle of the offensive line. Holding. 
Offense number 66. Ten yards from the previous spot. Three feet first down. That's Connor McGovern, the sophomore center, 6'5", 312 pounds. He was an All-Big Ten freshman, honorable mention last year, number two rated center, coming out of high school. And they just weren't prepared for that looping defensive tackle. It was Draymond Jones looping around, doing a great job forcing the hold from McGovern. So a first down and 20 at the 43. The Ohio State defense, confident now. McSorley, shovel pass, Barkley, spinning, Barkley wrapped up by Jerome Baker. The pursuit right here, here's Baker, and he's going to be going to his right, and he just pursues so great, he avoids the block right there, and then gets to Barkley, gets to his legs, and brings him down to the ground. Second down and 20 at the 43. McSorley dancing, throws on the move. The sicky over the middle with the catch. A seven yard gain on second and 20 as Jordan Fuller stops him. And that brings up. Third down and 13 at midfield. Big play here for both squads. Well, what they love to do is attack the inside receiver, whether it's Kosicki to the top of your screen or Deshaun Hamilton at the bottom of your screen. Those are your two matchups to watch on third down. And watch McSorley's legs as well. Here's McSorley, throws, up top, Gesicki with the catch at the 29. You called it, partner. A 22-yard gain on third and 13. It's because of the mismatch. Gesicki is so good in the one-on-one -on -one scenario with his great frame at 6'6", 250. He's got incredible leaping ability, but even more than that, as a volleyball player, he learns how to control his body in the air and attack the ball with power and purpose. It's what makes him such a great 50-50 catcher down the field. Six catches, 57 yards for Gesicki, first and 10. At the 28, McSorley near side, ball caught, sprinting to the end zone, Blacknell. And he's downed at the six. Saeed Blacknell stopped by Jordan Fuller. And he picks up 21, so back to back, 20 yard gains. And that brings up first and goal at the Ohio State seven. This had the feeling with Ohio State King on Barkley that McSorley was going to be the one that had to make plays. And guess what he's done? He comes out here and makes plays in a big situation. He did it last year for a championship in the Big Ten game, and he's doing it here against Ohio State. First down and goal at the seven. Empty backfield. Now Barkley. McSorley looking. And he stopped at the four. This is just an enormous sequence here. You cannot put the ball in harm's way if you're Trace McSorley because at worst, with a field goal, you make it a two possession game. He's gotta be careful with the ball, but also allow his players the ability to go make a play. For second down and goal at the four. McSorley again with the run. We'll get to the three. Jordan Fuller with the tackle. Touchdown here will make it awfully tough for Ohio State with seven minutes to play in the fourth. Penn State in no rush. Doing a smart job here of taking the entire clock as the play clock is just under 17 seconds now. Third and goal at the three. McSorley hands it off, and that D line stop. Robert Landers with the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. 
Rings up fourth down after the three-yard loss. What will Penn State do? Well, that's a great play by the defensive line, but the decision here I think is pretty easy. You make it a two-possession game. Send the field goal unit out. That's what James Franklin is going to do. Tyler Davis, 6 for 13 this season. In to attempt a 24-yarder. Got it down and up, and good. 5.42 to play in the fourth. Penn State up 38-27. Drive, now 38-27. Our game summary sponsored by Docker, Dockers, Khakis, ready for anything. So Ohio State will get it. K.J. Hill from his own goal line. And Hill straight ahead, and he gets to the 25. 5.37 to play in the fourth. Well, in these situations, when it's a two-possession game, inside of that seven-minute mark, six-minute mark, it's then a game within a game for the offense and the offensive play caller. You have to set a line of demarcation where you're trying to score before a certain point. That point for Ohio State is about three and a half minutes. So it's 5.37 right now. They're thinking to themselves, we need to score a touchdown in the next two minutes of game clock. First down and 10 at the 24. Empty backfield for Barrett. JT looking. Near side caught. Austin Mack, he gets out of bounds at the 35. Both teams with all three timeouts. And we're finally able to expose the middle of that Penn State defense on the last series for a touchdown to Johnny Dixon. We'll see if they go back and try to exploit that same area. First down to the 35. Barrett again to throw. Underneath. Caught. And it's Marcus Ball. He picks up four. Cabinda and Campbell on the tackle. We're seeing soft coverage from Penn State right now. Soft zone trying to get JT Barrett to throw the ball short. Barrett goes through his progressions with time. And what a catch. KJ Hill, Barrett. Put that ball in a shoebox. I tell you what, that was a great throw from Barrett. So many times in that traffic, you got to put the ball down near the ground, and that's exactly what Barrett did. 13-yard gain, first down to the 48. Barrett again. Barrett. And it's Austin Mack. Did he hold on? Yes, he did at the 30. And again, the tight window throw. Coverage was brilliant by Penn State. The throw was even better from JT Barrett. 18-yard gain, so back-to-back, -back, 13 and 18, first down at the 30. Barrett looking, Barrett in zone! Incomplete, but a flag. Penn State had too many guys on the field. They were trying to sub and didn't get it done. Offside, defense number 30, five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, they did run that 12th guy off, but lined up offside boy that just a touch more air and that's a touchdown just a touch and we've seen that a couple of times today from barrett with a guy open down the field and unable to connect first and five at the penn state 25. Ohio State playing with urgency now. Down 38-27. It's like a blitz coming from the short side of the field. Here's Barrett. Picks it up. Looks in the end zone. And a flag. Interference. Benjamin Victor, the intended receiver, and Christian Campbell, beaten on the play, grabs him. And the ball was thrown a little bit late and short, and because of that... Pass interference. Defense number one. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. 
Campbell was in no position to try to stop and make a play, and the ball runs right into the chest of Benjamin Victor. Clear call, excellent call by the officials, and now Ohio State set up inside the 15. First and goal at the 10 for the Buckeyes. JT Barrett has gotten him down the field quickly. Barrett delivers. Corner throw. Touchdown, Buckeyes. Johnny Dixon again. And it looks like Ohio State's going for two. It's just an incredible pass from Barrett. The third or fourth on this series that we've seen him fit into a tight window, and they will stay on the field and go for two. They worked on this situation on Thursday in practice several times. What they run. Johnny Dixon, number one, on an end around. They worked on it four or five different times from this exact formation. Johnny Dixon. At the bottom of your screen in the slot. Barrett. Here's the end around. Dixon cuts it in. And Penn State holds. Grant Haley. Huge tackle. But the Buckeyes score in a minute and 17. 38-33. 4.20 to go. J.T. Barrett wants another shot. He let him down the field in a minute and 17 seconds to score. Five for five, 56 yards in the touchdown to Johnny Dixon on the drive. And four of those throws are brilliant throws into tight coverage. But the kickoff team has been a problem for Ohio State. Nurnberger drives it. Barkley picks it up inside the 10. Barkley. And he's taken down. This time at the 14. Great coverage on special teams. Let's check in with Greg Wolf in Los Angeles. Gus, thanks. 25th ranked Iowa State knocked off then number three Oklahoma trying to finish off number four TCU. Kenny Hill back to pass. Picked off by Marcel Spears and that would seal it. Cyclones. Win 14-7. It's a four-way tie atop the Big 12 with Oklahoma still to play tonight. Gus, Joel, back to you. Ooh, I tell you what, Iowa State, they control their own destiny to get to the Big 12 championship game. What a job Matt Campbell has done. Penn State takes over at their own 15. First down and 10. Trace McSorley. And a handoff, and look at this! Nick Bosa, Hubbard, all the black belts in on that play. They just decided to have a little party in the backfield. Sam Hubbard says, I'm just going to tackle both of them. What an amazing job. Rather than wait for who gets the ball or where they're going, he just went after both players and brought them down to the ground. And Ohio State takes a timeout. This defense has been really good today. They've only given up 285 yards. Penn State came into the game as the second best offense in the Big Ten at 463. And James Franklin knows that they are in a precarious situation. Shadow their own goal line, second and very long with the best pass rush in college football on the field. Second down and 17 at the 8. There's no reason to play tight man coverage here. I would play zone if I was Greg Schiano and try to force these completions in front of my defenders. 
McSorley to Barkley, and he's tackled for a loss again. Robert Landers. Larry Johnson, the defensive line coach. His guys dialing it up now. And the one with the most ability to get to the quarterback on a long third down is Nick Bosa, number 97. He's on the field. I don't think Penn State's going to drop back and throw. This is going to be a handoff or a screen, maybe even a rollout from Trace McSorley. They can't afford to drop back here. On third and 19, McSorley, Barkley, stutter steps, gets to the 11, and Penn State will have to punt it deep in their own end. What a series from this Ohio State defense, and more specifically, the series from the defensive line of Ohio State. Greg Schiano, the defensive coordinator, said that this was the best defensive line he has coached pro or college. And they took over the game on that last series and gave their offense a lot of time with 321 left. And a timeout called by Ohio State. They used their second timeout. One remaining, 321 to go. Fourth quarter. That was an awfully safe series from Penn State. Three straight handoffs and a punt. Nittany Lions will rely on their defense now. Gillikin punting out of his own end zone. No pressure. KJ Hill back deep. Starts from the 31. Hill looking for a lane. Crosses the 40 and gets up to the 42 before being driven backwards. A 56-yard punt and a 7-yard return. Brandon Smith with the tackle on special teams. What a punt. It's an excellent job by the punt team who have had a kick blocked today, but they come back with an excellent hit there from Blake Gillikin, the sophomore, who had a great kick last week against Michigan in a similar situation. So JT Barrett, he's been criticized for not being able to win a big game. He'll start at his own 42-yard line, needing a touchdown with one timeout. Mike Weber in the backfield with him. Here's Barrett running it straight ahead. Not a lot of room as Jason Cabinda closes in on him. I'm interested to see how they're going to attack this series. The last series, time was making this an urgent type of play calling event. They were going down the field with passing. We'll see here now with more time on their hands. Gain of two, second and eight. Barrett stands strong in the pocket. McLaurin with the catch, J.T. Barrett, heart of a lion, a gain of 20. And that heart allows you to sit in the pocket and throw it in the face of that rush bearing down into your chest, and he did it with a beautiful throw. First down at the 36, Barrett rolls, delivers, and it's K.J. Hill. Downed at the 30-yard line by Haley. Clock still moving at 2.22. And they don't want to go too fast, but again, their rhythm is fast tempo, and they're going to stick with it. Barrett looking. Barrett underneath. Cut. Hill. And K.J. Hill down at the Penn State 15 by Haley. Great time in the pocket. And Barrett has been able to survey the defense and get through his progression to find the open man. He's been brilliant the last two possessions. Nearly perfect. He's been a conductor. First and 10 at the 16. Barrett looks. Fires. Touchdown, Buckeyes. Marcus Ball. J.T. Barrett.
They'll go for two again and try to make it a three-point game. But J.T. Barrett, you called it the heart of a lion, putting to bed the narrative that he can't play big in big moments. He has completed 16 passes in a row with the season on the line. Now empty backfield for Barrett, going for the two points. Barrett runs it himself, and he won't get in. Well defended by Penn State. 148 to play. 39-38. Well, what Penn State is going to try to do is drop the corner in coverage, but what that uh, does is allow the tight end to get down the middle of the field. There's no other safety there, and as the linebacker does not get depth, Ba is wide open and another perfect throw from Barrett right up high for the tight end to go up and get the touchdown. So Ohio State has the lead. However, their Achilles heel will take the field. And there's a lot of time and that two point conversion was huge. The stop at the one yard line makes this a one point game. Field goal would win it for Penn State, and they have to put that kickoff unit on the field. Again, they've given up a 60-yard return that set up a score. The opening kick of the game went to Barkley, and he took it 97 for a touchdown. The most dangerous man in college football is standing at the seven-yard line in the shoe with the season on the line. Nurnberger. Drives it short, picked up, and Penn State with three timeouts remaining, a minute and 45 to play, will have excellent field goal, field position rather, and a field goal can win it. What an amazing play from Jawan Johnson. They've tried to squib this ball now four or five times in a row. Watch him, he's acting like a third baseman. Watch how he just goes down and he's just going to bat it down. It can be dangerous, because as long as he recovers, look at the field position that he's given his offense. Now a short field, only a field goal needed to potentially win the game and stay perfect. First down and 10 at the 41 for Trace McSorley. McSorley on first down to throw under pressure. McSorley rolls and incomplete. But here's the question, Joel. Where do the Nittany Lions need to go to get in field goal range? Tyler Davis, their kicker, has a 47-yard career long. At that point, they need to get themselves inside the 30-yard line, right at the 30 for a 47-yarder, inside to make it short of his career long. Second and 10. McSorley pumping and taken down at the 35. Jalen Holmes. Second sack of the day for Ohio State. Jalen Holmes, the defensive end, is lined up as a defensive tackle. He gets to work against a guard. That's a great matchup for Ohio State. He beats him, dives over his man, gets the sack. McSorley's got no time to get the ball down the field to some of those great threats like Mike Gusecki. Penn State calls a timeout. They have two remaining. 134 to go. One point game. Two versus six. It's third and 15, but you don't need all 15 right here. It's a four down situation. I would not be shocked if Penn State tried to throw something short, maybe even a screen pass or something out of the backfield, in order to make it a shorter fourth down opportunity. And listen to this crowd. The Siki has been a go-to receiver for McSorley. Third and 15 at the 36. Barkley in the backfield. McSorley delivers up top for Gasicki and incomplete. No flags. 
That'll bring up fourth down and 15. Jordan Fuller and Denzel Ward covering Kosicki. Game on the line with this snap. The perfect season for the Nittany Lions. The, the ability to stay in the chase for the playoff for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Coach Franklin watches. Fourth and 15 at the 36. They need to go to the 49 for a first down. McSorley in trouble. McSorley looking, fires, incomplete. And Penn State turns it over on down. One twenty-two left. Overcoming all of those mistakes. The Ohio State Buckeyes showed some championship medal and championship heart tonight at home. Penn State still has two timeouts. Which means that Ohio State still needs a first down to ice this thing. Ohio State out of timeouts with a one-point lead. McSorley just had no time in the last couple of series to try to throw the ball down the field. Last year, Penn State outscored Ohio State 17 to nothing in the fourth quarter to win by three. Tonight, Ohio State has outscored Penn State 19 to three in the fourth quarter. And they've been led by this man, J.T. Barrett. I'd run it three times with J.T. Here's J.T. running it, takes his time, crosses the line of scrimmage. And we'll see the timeout called from James Franklin. Their second timeout. Who's the hardest working player on the field today? JT Barrett. He is the Duluth Trading Company. Hardest working player of today's game. As you take a look at his numbers, 328 yards passing, four touchdowns. This game likely puts him in New York as a Heisman finalist, and we'll see how the rest of the season goes. He's had a marvelous career, only three-time captain in the history of this storied program, and he was brilliant down the stretch. 16 straight completions leading his team to a one-point lead with a minute 17 left. Second and six at the 32. Barrett again. And back, first down, Ohio State. And that may do it. Joe Thomas Barrett, who says I can't win a big game. one of the great performances from Ohio State quarterback. Two versus six. 19-3 run in the fourth quarter. 16 straight completions. That's amazing stuff. He takes it in with 40 seconds to go. JT Barrett from Wichita Falls, Texas. He has been brilliant. This fourth quarter, the throws he was making, that one was wide open. Goes right down the middle of the field, but just on the money, 
time after time, small window throws, hanging in the pocket. The rush was bearing down on him several times, and he hung in there like a quarterback should, taking the hit to his chest, getting the ball down the field, 13 of 13, 170, three tugs in the fourth quarter. Come on! And the defense playing well after Saquon Barkley's 36-yard touchdown run in the second. Ohio State has held him to nine yards on 18 carries. And that's it. The Ohio State Buckeyes knock off the number two team in the nation. Led by their spectacular quarterback, JT Barrett. The final score from Columbus. 39-38, the What amazing heart this team showed. They made way too many mistakes. A lesser team gets beat. But with, 11 minutes, but with the 11 minutes remaining on the clock, they played clean, Joel. They did. They had to, and they did. Their defense was spectacular down the stretch. And the only thing that outdid the performance of that defensive line down the stretch was their quarterback. I haven't seen a fourth quarter like that in college football in a long time. JT Barrett was brilliant. What a pleasure to watch. So Ohio State wins it. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. All right, JT, you complete. I'll let you enjoy this in a sec, but you completed 16 passes in a row, three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. You put this team on your back. How did you do it? Nah, I mean, I just did my job. That's what they talked about all year, and even since I've been here, everybody do their job. We're going to be winners, so I just did my job and just tried to play my best for the team. There was emotion on the sideline. I saw some tears from some of your teammates. Tell me about the fight you saw from your guys tonight. Yeah, I mean, it didn't look good early. I mean, let's be honest. So with that, you just kept on fighting, and then it took everybody's last ounce to get this win, and um, I love those guys in that locker room. Does it get any better than this? Say again? Does it get any better than this moment? Hey, this Buckeye Nation has finest Big Ten football. Buckeyes win 39-38. Go Bucks. All right, enjoy. Thank you. All right, guys. Penn State led by 18 points twice in this game. Ohio State led once at the end. 39-38 the final. Rob Stone and the guys will be live from the shoe with more post-game coverage right after this.